Hello everyone, Helen Yu here at SAP Sapphire in Orlando, Florida. I'm here with Arpan Shah, who is the SVP and head of business suite. Hello Arpan, nice to see you. Nice to see you too, thank you for having me. Now, this is my third SAP Sapphire, what about you? So this is my fourth as an SAP employee, but I used to work at Microsoft, so I attended many Sapphires as a partner. And I just absolutely love the energy and meeting customers and partners. Yeah, me too. I share that enthusiasm as you, right? So before we dive into our topic about AI-powered business suite, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit further and then your uh, your role at SAP? Yeah, so um, I lead SAP Business Suite Product Management. Um, I actually live in Seattle, mm -hmm. and um, I've been with SAP for three and a half years. That's awesome. Do you do what do you do in spare time? <laughs> <laughs> when I have spare time, I have two little kids, so uh, they keep me pretty busy. But when I do have time, I love to play tennis and pickleball. Nice, me too. Yeah. I love pickleball too. And yeah. pickleball was actually um, uh, invented right near Seattle mm. in Bainbridge. Okay, that's another topic, another day. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, you know before we dive into yeah. the topic, let's do a level set. What when we talk about SAP Business Suite, what exactly it is, and tell us more about it. Yeah, so SAP Business Suite is a harmonized, integrated solution delivered by SAP, and with the goal of really delivering out of the box end to end processes. And so we want to make sure that across all different areas, finance, sales, supply chain, um, procurement, that customers are able to get value right out of the box. Mm -hmm. So UX consistency, making sure we have uh, Joule, our uh, AI co-pilot, so people can ask questions, and also having that unified data layer through BDC, mm -hmm. really giving this integrated harmonized experience. For I saw the sundial, right? I was right. at an analyst summit this morning and it's really clear you have the foundational layer as the business technology platform. Then you got data, uh, right. you, data you got app and AI layers. Right. So kudos to that. But what makes SAP Business Suite unique uh, compared to other best of breed solutions? I, you know, there, there, there are other best of breed solutions and we know customers have choice. Um, but I would say the big difference is, let's say you're a customer and you get one best of breed solution, maybe two or three for different functions. Mm -hmm. You'd have to do the effort of implementing each one, integrating each one. And even there, it would be siloed experiences, siloed data, siloed user experience um, and siloed uh, AI in general. So what we do with the business suite is we actually have this unified architecture that brings that integrated harmonized experience. And so customers can, again, get value mm -hmm. right out of the box across different business functions and do it quickly. Yeah, you know, in working with CIOs and CTOs, there's three things really top of mind when it comes to business transformation, right? One is, how do I make sure I have a consistent architecture? Right. Two is that even though I, when I adopt any um, solution, how do I integrate that into my existing platform? Thirdly, it's about security. How do we make sure everything is secure? So how does SAP Business Suite addressing all these Concerns. Yeah, so I mean, on the product side, we have very clear guidelines and standards for different LOB teams, mm -hmm. like our different product teams. And so we have guidelines on how to integrate. Everything's built on PTP as a common platform, as you mentioned. Uh, we're taking advantage of BDC as a data, a unified data layer. And then we're also consistently using uh, Joule as the mm -hmm. AI co-pilot. So by having a consistent architecture and guidelines, we're able to ensure that customers are able to take advantage of this integration while also being extensible. So we want to make sure through BTP and through our no-code and pro-code tools, customers and partners can extend mm -hmm. as they need to because that is a requirement. People need to extend with other data sources and different applications. Well, um, let's unpack that a little bit, right? What is your approach to balancing out of the box standard business processes and customer demands for flexibility? When we talk about the finance side, it could right. be report to record, it could be hire to uh, retire or procure to pay or order to cash. Yeah. So I think both are important. Mm -hmm. um, for a lot of our customers to get value, we want to make sure there are 
these out of the box end to end processes. So record to report or lead to cash or hire to retire or procure to pay and so on. So customers can get best practices and standard end to end business processes right from the business suite. And for us, that's important because it's time to value. It also ensures best practices. A lot of our customers say, so what's the best way to do this? Mm -hmm. So we actually provide that and that can be configured. In addition to that, we also, and we talked about this just now, we also realize that customers have existing landscapes. They have different applications. They may have different needs. So we do have APIs, we do have tools, and we provide BTP as a common platform so customers and partners can build extensions. And they can build those extensions on top of the SaaS solution. Mm -hmm. And that way, the SaaS solution, we can keep giving the value of the updates and the extensions are on top of it, so they don't have to worry about those conflicting with SaaS. So we actually have a really nice architecture and ability for people to extend and get the value out of the box. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a really a great way of reducing the burden from customers, right? Taking the ownership from your side to make sure they're taken care of right. automatically. But that's being said, how do customer feedback and market trends shaping the SAP Business Suite product roadmap? Right. So, I mean, as a product management leader, I think customer feedback is critical. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really want to make sure customers are using our products. They're also enjoying our products. So we have many ways to get feedback. Mm -hmm. um, one is just getting signals, obviously anonymously, on how people are using and what their experience is like. So for example, if a page is taking a long time to load or a report is, mm -hmm. we want to go and fix that and make sure customers have a delightful experience. Then we also have product councils where we get qualitative feedback and quantitative feedback, as well as events like this, like Sapphire, we have, mm -hmm. I don't know how many, but over 10,000 15, customers, 15,000 customers. Yeah. So this is a great way to get yeah. feedback as well. So we get feedback from customers, we get feedback from partners, and that's on the existing solution. My team also looks at market trends. Mm -hmm. And one just example would be AI. Mm -hmm. So a few years ago, we saw kind of the uh, rise of Gen AI, and we, were, we always had AI um, in our products, but we said, how can we take advantage of Gen AI? So we looked at the capabilities, we had some use cases we wanted to check out, we validated with customers and partners. We said, hey, customers, partners, what do you think? And the ones that were most high value, we focused on them. We released some beta features, if you will, mm -hmm. worked with our customers and partners, iterated, and then we ga these features. So um, I think both are important. We have to look at existing feedback, but we also have to evaluate trends, create use cases, validate, and also make sure we're able to deliver value faster um, and what our customers expect. That sounds like a playbook for the industry, so thank you. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when we talk about this transformation, we cannot just look at technology alone, right. right? There's processes and people as well. But can you explain how SAP Business Suite really leveraged the embedded AI? We talked about Drew, you talked you talk about a little bit, and right. the SAP Business Technology Platform to enhance processes. Right, so we, so, um, we build on top of BTP. Mm -hmm. And what's really nice about that is it drives that consistency also provides an extensibility layer so partners mm -hmm. and customers can take advantage of it. So that is a critical part of our strategy. Um, from an AI perspective, um, there are a few ways I would look at it. One is we wanna make sure that we're delivering really tangible value from an AI perspective. So we embed use cases where users are. Mm -hmm. And so for example, if they're looking at certain reports or they're in our UI and they want a summary, they can do that with a click of a button in context. So we do that where it makes sense. And then across the business suite, we take advantage of Jewel. Mm -hmm. So Jewel for me is the AI user interface, if you will, mm -hmm. kind of like our co-pilot, where a user can go and ask questions. And irrespective of where they are, the Jewel understands who that person is, knows what they have access to, and then can answer questions across different business areas. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna know what are my outstanding purchase orders or give me more information about this thing, it can do it from anywhere. 
And so as a product team, we really make a bet on BTP, we make a bet on Jewel, and a lot of the other standards I talked about. That's amazing. If I were a new hire, I could be onboarded fairly quickly, right? right? Or, you know, with the great tsunami coming around the corner, especially for manufacturer, 30% of the employees or workforce are over 50 years old today. And 10 years from today, you got a lot of people retiring. So that retaining that knowledge right in the AI can help us accelerate the upscaling right. and rescaling of the workforce. Uh, yeah, right. absolutely. I, I mean, I think productivity is something all orgs um, are looking for. And, and one thing I forgot to mention as part of that is because we're also building on top of, on top of the business data cloud, mm -hmm. it also allows us to build these amazing AI use cases across these um, functional boundaries, if you will. And then again, partners and customers could take advantage of that as well. So they can build these AI yeah, use cases much more easily. Are these also industry specific? They are. So we look at, obviously there are some use cases that are, are more horizontal, mm -hmm. but one of the things that we look at from an SAP perspective is how can we drive industry value? So we also look at that as well. That's amazing. You know, this morning at an analyst summit, I heard that you're going to change the um, licensing commercial models, right? And then they're, you're going to publicize the right. uh, pricing on the website. So what is your team doing to make sure that you offer clear value and support customers moving to growing within SAP Business Suite? Yeah, I mean, from a product management perspective, like, like I said, my number one goal is to make sure customers are adopting our software and also happy with their software, customer set. And one of the things that we're, we're doing is actually giving customers uh, flexible packages. Mm -hmm. And these packages are aligned with different buying centers or personas. Mm -hmm. So if you're the chief financial officer or chief procurement officer, for example, we have business suite packages. So we have a finance package, procurement package, sales package, um, and a supply chain package. So customers have the flexibility of buying and using mm -hmm. what they want. And of course, we're also seeing a lot of customers who want multiple packages. Again, that's one of the value propositions of the business suite. That's uh, phenomenal. So what do you see as the biggest opportunities or challenges for business to leverage SAP Business Suite as a digital transformation accelerator? So, I mean, we, uh, we talk about product quite a bit. Um, we also talk about processes, these end-to-end -end processes, like hire to retire, lead to cash, so on and so forth. But one part of the equation, when I think of business transformation are people. And what I see an opportunity for partners, SAP and obviously customers themselves to really make sure we give uh, uh, end users the skills and understanding of how the new business processes can work, how they can get more value out of it. So I do think that's an important part of it. And so there, that's an area where I think we all have to invest more mm -hmm. over the coming years so we can really make sure that customers can take advantage of the value we're delivering and ultimately um, grow their business and make sure their businesses are running smoothly. Mm -hmm. I can't, I could not have agreed more with you, right? I think in the, in the coming years, it's going to be a time for human to interact with right. agentic AIs to uh, really take the leap of faith together, not just to do it alone. Uh, and what sessions are you speaking at? At the yeah, I'm doing a few sessions. Yeah. Um, so I'm doing a demo session mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow on Tuesday that I believe is being uh, streamed. Mm -hmm. And I'm also doing a business suite overview session mm -hmm. on Wednesday, which should also be recorded and streamed. So um, if you're at the event or um, after the event, I, I highly encourage you to check it out. And in those, de in those sessions, we also have some demos so people can actually see what we're delivering because mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of showing customers what we're delivering. Um, and so that, that should be really interesting Wonderful. as well. Wonderful. I look forward to uh, seeing that as well. Thank you so much, Arpan, and I look forward to seeing your sessions and staying in touch as well. Thank you, Helen, for having me.